I wanted to rebuild a horrible team and turn them into a dynasty. UConn is pretty bad, and so is South Alabama, but Coach Husky decided on a different team and would coach UMass. He wanted to lead the Minutemen from the MAC to the ACC to a national championship. Can we do it in only six years? Let's find out. Coach Husky's first game coaching would be at home against Arkansas State, and Adam Tyler would find the end zone on the opening drive for the Minutemen, but unfortunately, the defense would give up the lead for the first time today in the second quarter. Chris Roberts would lead the offense down the field, though, and throw on another touchdown pass to take the lead back, but with under a minute left in the half, our defense needed to stop the Red Wolves' offense, which they ultimately would do and held them to only three points, which we would be able to get down the field and match right before halftime, as that would send us to the locker room tied at 17. Our defense didn't look too hot to start the second half, though, and poor tackling would lead to an opening touchdown for Arkansas State, but thankfully, our offense was still hot and also scored on their opening drive, and after a field goal, one more touchdown would seal the game for UMass, and Coach Husky would get a win in his first ever game. Game. Week 2, he started targeting some higher ranked recruits in hopes of landing them, but there's little chance they would come to a team that was struggling against FCS East, as this field goal would put them up by two possessions over the Minutemen, and despite the late game efforts of our offense, they would drop this game to the Howlers. After losing to an FCS team last week, I didn't have much faith in our team this week, but our defense started the game strong by forcing a turnover, and this has to be one of the most acrobatic interceptions I've ever seen. With an opportunity to jump ahead, we went for it on fourth down, but would fail miserably. But thankfully, our defense seemed to have our back today as they would come away with yet another interception to keep this game scoreless. That wouldn't be the case forever though as Kansas State would strike first, and right before halftime, they would find the end zone again as we'd head into the locker room down by two possessions. We needed points badly this opening drive, and finally we would find the end zone, and after our defense would get a stop, we would be able to tie it up at 14 apiece. After yet another stop, we would take our very first lead of the game over Kansas State, and on the next drive, sophomore Jacob Bennett would would come away with an unbelievable interception along the sideline, and I think this one might be even better than the one we saw in the first quarter. Although we wouldn't get six, we would still settle for three points, but Kansas State was not going out without a fight in this game. But after we successfully recovered the onside kick, this game was all but over, as our defense forced four interceptions today. Vanderbilt was ranked 23rd in the nation, so I was a little nervous headed into this game. Our defense started out strong by forcing a third down stop, and we were able to hold Vandy to only three on their opening possession. Our offense must have had a boost of confidence from their performance last week as we soon found ourselves up 14 to 3 over Vanderbilt. Obviously, we could not get ahead of ourselves though as the Commodores were still a top 25 team, but I was proud of how our team was playing against them so far this game as we were able to take our lead back headed into halftime. The defense would get one last clutch stop before that and we would head into the locker room with a one point lead. We had a chance to extend this lead at the start of the second half, but unfortunately would have to settle for a long field goal that our kicker would knock down. We'd then blow an even better opportunity on third and goal to extend our lead again, and once again would be left settling for a field goal. Vanderbilt's offense would go right to work as Lewis White would find the end zone to tie the game up, and we would get so incredibly lucky with this drop on third down the next drive, and because of it, Vanderbilt would only go up by three points. That would give Chris Roberts a chance to lead the offense down the field on a game-winning drive for the upset, as he would find Adrian Smith from 17 yards out to the end zone to take the lead with less than a minute to go. We needed a stop from our defense, and they would come up huge with a stop in the end zone on the very last play of the game, and UMass would upset number 23 Vanderbilt behind the arm of our quarterback Chris Roberts. We were a quarter of the way through season number one, and I was really excited about how our recruiting board looked, especially with five-star quarterback Antonio Cummings and four-star receiver Casey Collins with us at the top of their lists. This was also our first game of MAC conference play, and our defense started us out on a good note, as Chris Roberts and the offense looked to capitalize off of it, but could not complete this touchdown pass, so Jamal Freeman would come out and knock down a 43-yard field goal. And you tell me, does this look like a Jamal to you? Chris Roberts would connect with Derek Cooper to put us in field goal range to end the first quarter, and Matt Sullivan would cap it off from two yards out. John Holmes would then gift us the ball back on their next possession as he would throw it directly to Eric Avery of our defense, but our offense would not be able to capitalize on this opportunity and would go three and out. Once again, though, our defense would come up clutch and get a goal line stop as we would hold the Falcons to only three on this possession, and we would have a chance to add a touchdown here before half but we couldn't get in and would settle for the safe play and take our three and would head into the locker room with a 10 point lead. Our defense had been on fire all day and that continued to start the second half of the game but eventually they would bend and break as they would give up a 24 yard touchdown run to Cornelius Herman for the Falcons first touchdown of the day. It was only a three point game now but Chris Roberts would extend it here with this touchdown pass and after a lot of punting back and forth between the two teams John Holmes would run it in for the Falcons. If they wanted any chance at winning they needed to stop 
stop us on this long third and 21, but Chris Roberts would connect with Adam Tyler for 36 yards in the first down. And after picking up one more first down on the ground, we would walk away with our first MAC victory. That first conference victory got more recruits to sign with us, with the most notable being three-star linebacker Kevin Harris. Hopefully a win against Miami this week can convince more recruits to sign with us, but it wasn't looking to be a great start for us to the game. After going up 7-0, the Miami offense was driving down the field on us once again, and then Joey Trent again would complete a beautiful touch pass to Brian Hunter in the corner floor touchdown, but the refs wanted to take another look at this play, and to me, it clearly looks like his foot was out, but the refs said f*** you and gave them the touchdown anyway. We desperately needed points before halftime if we wanted to stay in this game, and Adam Tyler would fight all the way down into field goal range for us, and he would be rewarded for his efforts with a touchdown reception on the very next play. We had a long third down to start the second half and didn't want to go three and out, so Lee Moore made sure we didn't with this fantastic play, deflected by the defense, and he still managed to hang on to the pass. This play would ultimately pay off for us as Matt Sullivan then would take it into the end zone from 19 yards out to tie it up. And then on fourth and three, Joey Trudigan would show some amazing pocket presence by stepping up and avoiding a sack and delivering a dot for a touchdown to his tight end, Ryan Clark. Lewis Brown came screaming off the edge, but just barely misses the sack, although Trudigan would take a hard hit from Jonathan Arrington. After a UMass turnover, the Red Hawks would score again quickly, and Chris Roberts was trying his best to get his team back into this game, as Nate Sullivan would make it a one-possession game for us, but our hands team could not recover Jay Weaver's onside kick, and with the first down for Miami and no timeouts left for us, the Red Hawks would hand us our first conference loss of the season. Halfway through season one, we were sitting at four and two, starting quarterback Chris Roberts has played well for us and is seventh in the nation in passing yards. I would like to see some better production from Matt Sullivan in our offensive line in the running game, but I've been very happy with how Adam Tyler has been playing for us, and the same can be said for Jonathan Arrington on the defense. We were starting the second half of season one, and Buffalo was currently in first place in the division. It would be huge for us if we could beat them today, but with the way we were playing, it wasn't looking like that would happen. Thankfully, our defense would get their first stop of the game, and we would be down three possessions before halftime. Chris Roberts had other plans for us, though, as he would connect on a deep pass to Adrian Smith to put us into field goal range, and on the very next play would find Larry Thomas in the back of the end zone for a touchdown. It looked like we were continuing that positive momentum to start the second half as we were driving down the field on our first possession and Chris Roberts would cap it off with a touchdown on the read option. Our defense would continue getting stops against the Buffalo offense, but they would manage to extend their lead to six. We needed a touchdown on this final drive if we wanted to take down the Bulls, and that is exactly what we would get as Chris Roberts found a wide open Thomas Carter for a touchdown and Jamal Freeman would give us the lead on the extra point. But Buffalo had other plans as on their last play, Dan Smith would make our entire defense miss and would take this screen pass 80 yards down the left sideline and into the end zone for the last second go-ahead touchdown, and the Bulls would walk this one off here at home. After a heartbreaking loss against Buffalo, we needed to bounce back against Western Michigan at home, but that would be tough against a safety that looked like this. Regardless of that beast, we found the end zone first, and our defense was looking just as good as our offense was this game as well. Chris Roberts went right back to work though, showing off his arm as he would connect deep with Lee Moore for a huge touchdown down the right sideline, but Western Michigan was looking to respond with points of their own before halftime, and they would do so with a Billy Collins touchdown to end the half, and we would have a seven point lead headed into the locker room. Our defense would do a good job holding that lead to start the second half for us, as they would get a stop and force a Broncos field goal. But our offense hadn't scored all half yet, and Western Michigan could take the lead here. On fourth and one, their halfback would make a nasty juke to pick up the crucial first down, but on third and goal, Lewis Brown would come up with a huge sack for us, and we were able to hold on to our lead still. With no timeouts left for Western Michigan, we just needed a first down and to run the clock out, and that is exactly what we would do as we would pick up a close win here at home. This week would be our toughest game yet, as the Huskies were ranked number five in the country. They were proven to be hard to stop as they were driving on their opening possession, and would cap off the drive with a Lionel Macklin touchdown from 17 yards out. Our offense, on the other hand, was looking like it's 61 overall rating, and finally by the second quarter, we got into scoring range, and Kevin Brown would take this 22-yard halfback screen into the end zone, but the number five team in the country would strike right back as Lionel Macklin would torch us for yet another Husky touchdown. Our defense, though, has always had our back this year and did so again by picking off Jordan Lynch, which would set up this field goal from Jamal Freeman before halftime, and we'd head into the second half with only a five-point deficit. We needed points to open up the second half if we wanted to stay in this game, and after not converting on third down, we had to convert on fourth down, and thankfully that move would pay off as we take the lead over the number five team in the country. A missed 
extra point earlier in the game though forced us to go for two here but we were unsuccessful so it was only a one point lead that NIU had to erase which should be easy for them as they would take the lead on a field goal their next drive after that we were in a huge hole and could not convert a third and 24 to stay in this game so it was once again up to our defense to try to keep us alive and they would come up with a huge third down stop against the Huskies offense but on fourth down Jordan Lynch would find Mark Jefferson who would pick up the first down for the Huskies and that was all they needed to win this game this game against NIU wouldn't be the only thing we lost this week as we also lost the lead on four-star receiver Casey Collins this was an important game for us as we had our last three big recruits visiting and it was a chance to regain the lead on Casey Collins if we wanted him and Antonio Cummings to commit to our school we had to have 300 plus passing yards today and five passing touchdowns as well so our offense got right to work today attacking the Akron defense through the air this touchdown pass from Chris Roberts to Derek Cooper was what really opened the floodgates today for our offense as Chris Roberts would go on to have a record setting day for himself the rest of the game he would set the school record for single game touchdown passes and his first completed pass of the second half would also put him over 300 yards on the day he put us so far ahead of the zips that the backups were in by the fourth quarter and we would walk away with a huge victory courtesy of his five touchdown performance which was enough to sign five-star quarterback Antonio Cummings and take the lead back on four-star receiver Casey Collins we had two games left in the regular season and we were taking on Central Michigan this week they would get on the board with their first possession but we would strike right back with a 19-yard touchdown pass to Lee Moore both teams were going back and forth with each other all game long as it looked like this game would end up being a shootout there were even trick plays as on fourth and two we pulled out the fake punt and our punter would complete a pass to Joe Brown for 20 yards and a first down I mean just look at this amazing dive and catch he made that trick play would pay off for us as we would find the end zone again to extend our lead but by the fourth quarter neither team had scored the entire second half the first points would end up coming from a Jamal Freeman field goal in the fourth quarter and then John Oliver and the Chippewas offense would strike back with a huge run for a touchdown on a crucial fourth and three to stay in this game but they wouldn't however be able to recover their onside kick as Kevin Brown would give us one more touchdown from nine yards out to give us the win over Central Michigan this was our last game of season one and even though we were out of contention for our division we were still in contention for four-star receiver Casey Collins I don't know if he's gonna want to play for a team with a defense that looks like this though as our defense had played so well for us this first season and was the reason we won as many games as we did but today something was off as they were letting Ohio's offense just score at will on them and our offense was being absolutely no help whatsoever as well today as our defense would give up 38 points in the shutout loss and Chris Roberts would only complete three passes all game long we needed to forget about that poor performance though as we had our first bowl game coming up with the dynasty and our defense couldn't have started this game out any better for us as we'd come away with an interception on Utah State's first possession and that would turn into a Matt Sullivan eight yard touchdown rush to start the day for us it was almost halftime and our defense had held the Aggies scoreless all game long but they would tack on a field goal right before halftime and we'd head into the locker room with a seven to three lead we were determined to win our first ball game as we'd take a risky chance by going for it on fourth and 12 in the third quarter and it would pay off as we would convert in the very next play Chris Roberts would find Lee Moore for our second touchdown of the day somehow Utah State would strike back with this impossible touchdown grab by the receiver and I mean look at this it goes through two of our defenders so we had to pull out all of the tricks to stay alive against Utah State and would convert another fourth down on a fake punt which seemed to be our specialty this season that conversion would be rewarded with an Adam Tyler touchdown from 17 yards out and then on defense we would come away with yet another interception along the sideline and this one may have just sealed the game for us all we needed to do was convert this long third 19 and Chris Roberts would connect with Derek Cooper deep down the left sideline and with that first down we'd run out the clock and win our very first bowl game with UMass in this dynasty Chris Roberts had a fantastic season for us as our quarterback and for being hurt for a few games Matt Sullivan had a good year as well Adam Tyler was our end of the year leading receiver and Jonathan Arrington was our solo leader in almost all defensive stats Adam Tyler was our only notable player graduating from the team this year and his replacement would be 70 overall Thomas Carter we still had one unsigned high school recruit and that was receiver Casey Collins we put all our recruiting points into him this offseason and thankfully would land the four-star receiver which would give us the 58th ranked class in the country after offseason training Chris Roberts was our first player on the roster rated higher than an 80 overall and and this team was looking promising as we geared up to head into season two of the dynasty.